My eyes, I, I can't see anything, Mum. Mum, he's gone blind. Wow! This is Rob, and I'm Rachel, and these are our boys, Finn, Declan, and Ivan. We have sailed our catamaran Javelot across the Pacific Ocean. We would love it if you join us for the adventure. One of the benefits of having a home on the ocean is our access to the incredible bounty of sea creatures that pass through our backyard. For the last three years, we've been lucky to capture so many of these mesmerizing moments and share them with you. That's a shark, you see? It's all on your tail, you can ah, see there it has a tail. Yeah, it's like on the bottom, you can tell by the way it's... There it goes, look. It's so uh, we're in at Sariri Island, which is uh, also known as Long Island, and we're just looking at some footage that our friends on Chasing Eden, the Wholesome Sailors, sign up to their website. They've given us this footage, and it kind of changes everything you think about sharks and dolphins because this footage shows sharks, two sharks, playing with a pod of dolphins, and they're all rolling around and having a great time together which isn't what you'd expect that looks weird yeah it's weird how you but can, it's nice it's yeah nice you can see. obviously tell that the sh that's sharks and dolphins because the dolphins are so much more agile you can tell well, like he's the, moving pretty well he's moving yeah like sharks are agile as well but you can just tell that dolphins can just turn way harder and just go way faster than all the sharks well there's only two but yeah you can just tell and it's it's pretty cool yeah, yeah. This display of playfulness between the sharks and the dolphins was as surprising as it was intriguing to witness. However, a different game of rough and tumble, as old as time, was playing out on the far side of the island. It's turtle nesting season here, and the shallows along the west coast of Long Island are alive with these normally solitary creatures. Each of those little dots in the water is a turtle. From September to March, breeding females return to the beach where they hatched in order to reproduce. The male turtles turn up to oblige the females in this process. So these turtles, they kind of, they get harassed. The females get harassed. And you see the females just pulled up along the beach. You think they're dead or preparing to lay eggs later that night. But actually, no, no, they're just recovering and trying to stay away from the males who the moment they go back in the water you know what happens they're just exhausted they get pushed under the water and the male just it's we've seen like kind of multiple not just two but three or four kind of all in a big ball man it's full on it's quite aggressive during turtle nesting season last year, while we were on the east coast of Australia, we witnessed the full turtle reproductive cycle, from conception to hatching. This is footage that we have wanted to share with you for some time, so allow us, if you will, to whisk you back in time to the Great Barrier Reef Islands of Queensland, November 2020, a whole year younger, slimmer, and some of us with less teeth. Conception. Baby, yeah. 
turtle mating runs on a first come first served basis with neither gender being overly particular with their choice of partner. The male approaches the female nudging her head and gently biting the back of her neck. If the female does not flee, the male attaches himself to the female's shell, gripping for dear life with the claws on his front flippers. He then folds his long tail under her shell to copulate. Mating regularly occurs on the surface of the water with the females struggling to remain upright as two or more males fight for her attention. It's not unusual for females to have scratches or wounds on their shells from these encounters, but that maybe is the least of their worries. So they're tootling on up to have a look at the turtles mating. These ones we've been filming, honestly, they've been at it for no long time. Holy heck! The boat coming in here, heading towards those turtles. I hope they're, I hope they're aware there's a couple of turtle shagging. Yeah, they have seen them. God, it came pretty close. Those turtles, the turtles didn't worry about it too much. Well, they're pretty. Oh, they did then. <clears throat> they're a little bit distracted, to be fair. Nesting. Turtle tracks from the ocean. What look like tar tracks all over the beach are actually turtle tracks and they are everywhere. There's been a lot of turtle action here. Still plenty to come as well. What you got there, Dex? I think it's an egg. Looks Shadow. like an egg, doesn't it? It's an egg shell. I think so, but I think it's one that's been dug up and a seagull's yeah, got to it. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah, so that turtle probably didn't make it. Yeah. Probably totally, totally that one. No. Oh, yeah. It's hardly surprising. When you come up here and look at all the little mounds that the turtles that the turtles have made, it's hardly surprising that they would have dug up each other's nest. It's like craters of the moon it's just mounds and then dip and then mound and then dip and then mound and then dip for as far as you can see turtles come in and it looks like it's, it's haphazard how they decide where they decide they're going to lay their eggs digging up each other's uh, nests um, and burying some eggs, I would say, very, very deep. Because it's just crazy. There's no, there's no pattern at all. That's disappointing. There's a whole nest being dug up here, probably by another turtle, and then the seagulls come and get them. Oh, whole nest of turtles destroyed. It's a shame. But there are a lot of turtles coming up and nesting here. Yep. So we've come to the beach and we're waiting now for the turtles to come up from the water. They don't like to be disturbed when they're coming up the beach. If they get disturbed, they turn around and they go back in and it's a huge effort for them coming up the beach, building a body pit, building the egg chamber and it's when they build the egg chamber that we can move in and watch them. They go into a kind of trance as they lay their eggs and they couldn't care less if a bus of tourists came through with cameras. A little bit like humans giving birth. It's the same thing. You get to a point and couldn't care less who was watching. Using her hind flippers, the female carefully scoops out a vertical pear-shaped cavity known as the egg chamber. It's quite incredible to see how carefully and dexterously she removes the sand with her flippers then flicks it away. This process can take about 10 minutes and continues until the chamber is about 60 centimetres deep. Then she's ready to lay her eggs. Can you see the eggs in the bottom? No. Let's see if we can see the eggs. 
Oh, yeah, huh? So just behind me, you can see the light there is where the, uh, the turtle is hatching, hatching, laying its eggs. And the number of eggs going into the hole, uh, the way it digs the hole, its technical um, use of its flippers and the, how, the dexterity of them, it's, it's incredible. And, uh, but the number of eggs and the, and the translucent nature of the eggs, the size of the eggs, they're quite, quite large. Like They're not golf ball size, they're bigger than golf ball size, um, most of them. Uh, probably a third again size. And they sort of bounce when they <laughs> drop it on each other. It's pretty, pretty extraordinary. feel extraordinarily humble to be witnessing this amazing event of nature. Death and life. There. She's obviously come in here to lay her eggs. She must have come in a different way. Maybe she came in that way. Yeah. Laid her eggs, turned around, started coming this way, got stuck. Apparently they can't back up. She would have kept forcing and forcing. And she just, I mean, she's obviously been dead a long time. But oh, God. she couldn't get out. It's awful. No one here to help her. Yeah. No, babies would have had to come faster, not knowing they're their mum. Oh. <laughs> they probably don't stop for things like that. They probably don't be expecting to see their mum anyway, ever. Sad. Deeply sad, it's just heartbreaking. But they don't start breeding till they're 50. Yeah. So she's an old girl. 40 to 50 years of age. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. been around the traps and ended up getting trapped. Turtles weren't the only creature reproducing on the island. Yes, Mama, we mean you no harm. Mother and child. It's a beautiful thing. These are us, the tamest birds, aren't they? Amazing. We just let you touch them. Oh, you're a bird whisperer, Declan. Yeah. This guy's uh, lost his mum. He's fallen out of his nest. Yeah. This guy may not make it, Rachel. I don't think he will make it. Oh, that's so sad. He'll probably come back tomorrow. He doesn't look good, does he? No. Good. The day after. Yesterday. Poor thing. Did you read The Life of Pi? Where he uh, stumbled across this island in the middle of the ocean. It's got everything that you need to survive. And they live on this island for a period of time. It's got everything. There's monkeys there too, there's other animals, and the most lush green forest. and fish life and anyway he discovers over a period of time that the island is actually a carnivorous island and it actually eats I mean it's going to have a crack at him if he's not careful this is kind of what this island reminds me of it's so beautiful and lush and green and it provides the most amazing nesting for these um, noddies but there's a cost there's a bit of a tax on it and there's a percentage of these birds get stuck with the glue that comes out of the flowers it comes out of the trees it's like a sap and it falls down onto the bird gets caught in their wings uh, the twigs the sort of little twigs that attach to the branches stick to the feet and the feathers of the birds as well to the point where they can no longer fly and uh, and they end up dying on the ground and they rot back into the earth and thereby feed the tree I thought the trees would get enough nutrients through the, uh, the fertiliser that uh, they produce on a regular basis. <laughs> but apparently not. They need some flesh and bones as well. The circle of life. 
We'll give you a little bit of support to sustain your life, but we want a little bit back in return. And that's their return. Some pay with their lives. Whether dying by Personium tree bud or falling out of their nests, the island claims a fair number of noddy terns. The boys decided they would try and help one of the baby chicks back into a nest. Unfortunately, the nest dweller, who probably wasn't the chick's mother, had other ideas. Uh, what do you want to do? I don't know. Um, the question is do we take it back or not? Take one? It's going to die either way pretty much. Well, it's definitely going to die. It's definitely going to die it. if we leave it here. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah, if we leave it here, it will. Yep. So what to do? Chance, they brought the chick, named Glenn, back to Javelo to see if we could keep him alive one more night. Oh, right, yeah, go get some more of that. Go get some more water. So we've just run through part of the track. It's a three minute run and we have just found dead ten chicks. So we weren't even looking for dead them. on the path. That's on the path. So you extrapolate out. Across. Lady Musgrave Island. The whole island. It's incredible. That's a lot of chicks. Yeah, you know, it's sort of a dilemma. You know, taking Glenn and saving Glenn's life or extending his life anyway. We hope, you know, he goes all the way, but was that a good thing? Is is that a good thing? I think so. I think so too. He definitely would be dead if he hadn't oh, picked yeah. him up. No doubt. No doubt at all. So, he's thriving on the boat. He's he's two Hamel days old. Loving yes, it. he's probably better off. Amongst his own, he's but probably better off amongst his own. If we brought him back here, he would die. But if we brought him back here, he'd die. <laughs> There's an echo in here. Where? <laughs> well. Anyway, as you were, keep running. Uh, I'm calling card from the tree as I finish the run. <laughs> oh dear. My mother says if you get pooed on a bird, it's lucky. Hmm. And that's because it made us feel better. It's looking on the bright side, isn't it? But I do feel lucky now. Yeah. Because it's in my psyche that I'm lucky. Yes. For being pruned on. Lucky old me. Oh dear. I'm off to wash it away. <laughs> Glenn would go on to become a valuable member of our crew. A good listener, he also loved to cook, help the boys with their schooling, and generally hang out. And we loved him. Life and death. Sadly, Glenn didn't survive. We have since learnt that it was a bad idea to remove Glenn from the island and we would not encourage this behaviour. However, when we returned to Lady Musgrave six weeks later, the other noddy turn chicks were all grown. We couldn't help but think of our Glenn. Declan charms the birds out of the trees. No, How did you do that? Them. Did it just jump on you? On did it just jump on your arm? Yeah. That's incredible. They're so. I think this is one of the chicks, though. They're so tame, aren't they? Oh, Glenn, this could have been you. Oh, hello. Come onto my hand instead. Look yeah. at you. Who's got your people turn? <laughs> me and my friend, the Noddy Turn. This is so cute. Oh, I can't come believe it just... And oh. you frightened it away. Lovely as this was, it was merely a distraction from the main event of the evening. We were here to complete the circle of turtle reproduction. While hatching turtles usually appear from the ground under the cover of darkness to avoid daytime predators, every once in a while a few hatchlings will get pushed out of the nest early. Careful to evade the seagulls, they must run the gauntlet down to the ocean to begin their life at sea. Unfortunately, only one in a thousand baby turtles will make it to maturity, and it's not hard to see why. Poor little one got eaten by the seagull. Not necessarily eaten, but attacked. And we're taking him down to the beach. And that's he survived, the right seagull, so the, the seagull no. dropped him. 
I step away for five seconds to go and get my cardigan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And a seagull comes and gets another one. Exactly. And it seems like it's in shock. He didn't actually get away. The protectors rallied round, but he's not moving. He's a lot smaller than he's the other He's not ones. moving. He's just sitting there. So I don't know. He might mm. be. The ground was just moving just behind him. I can zoom in and everything. That yeah. stopped again. But our That's friend has up. not moved. Here oh, he here he goes. He says, I'm, I'm ready. What's going on? I've recovered. Where I can do this. The sea? I can do this. Are you off? Oh, you poor little blighter. Yes, I'm away. I'm a bit blind. What's that in his eyes? What's that in his eyes? He's been yeah. attacked by a turtle, but he... Uh, not by a turtle. He's been he says, attacked by a seagull. He says, you can pluck me out of my nest, but you can't pluck me out of... The world. <laughs> my reason d'etre is to get to that sea. Come yeah, hell or high this water. Great, this great footprint. Yeah, all these footprints. Move them all out. <laughs> Put, fill in the footprint. Fill in the footprint. Oh, that's a nice little hill from the car. That's cool. Move the stick. Yeah. <laughs> He's building muscles now. You've got to give him a bit of a workout, oh. otherwise he won't survive. Go man, go! <laughs> a little helping hand from David there. <laughs> David. He's alright though, you'll be alright, you'll get there. So while this little critter, the second loggerhead, the second loggerhead comes down, we can see, just down over there, uh, we can see there's two sharks just out here. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's quite a, hey, that's quite a big fin, that one. Just saw there. I wonder, is that a tiger? Anyway, I don't think the single guy is going to get very far somehow. I hadn't started exactly, from there. Exactly where our little friend had and There gone. is it, yeah, you'll just see the and shark. What a hard there. start. You get plucked. See the shark there, there he is. He's just sussing out. Pretty <laughs> warm. So you get plucked scandal. out of your nest by a seagull. You just take a moment to recover with a whole load, bunch of people watching you. <laughs> then a whole bunch of people protect you from the seagulls as you get down. A wave pushes you back up. You have to come again <laughs> at it. And you make it to the water, yay! And we give a big hooray, and then we see this shark. No, 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 no. Dawn. Dawn. Gone burger. I just have to say, we saw a mass eruption. Well, not a mass, 35 oh, turtles that's... coming out, and it was so cool. The, um, the, pub, the sad part was, there were sharks everywhere waiting for them. I'm not sure if any of them will, uh, will make it past. They ran the gauntlet down to the beach and then into the mouths of the shark. And there was one tiny little one and he took ages. He was slower than all the others. He got all the way down. And there was the shark waiting for him. Munchie's got him, most of them. So sad. We Possibly did throw some stones at the sharks, but I think he, I think he probably got, got He was so cute and so tiny. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Or dares to dream. I hope he got through. I hope he got through. So, from today, from tomorrow, or the day after that, something like that, the, t the island is shut. I think it's perfect timing. We've ticked the, ticked the boxes. We've completed the circle of life for the turtles. <laughs> what we wanted to see. 
and it's all good. Yeah, we can go. We can go. Just making our way to the beach. We're making our way to the beach. Spotted. To see the turtles. And there's one on the beach right people, people, now. People, people. We've seen it. Wait, listen, I'm pretty sure you, I'm pretty sure you can hear I think you can hear them. Oh, oh I think that's, that's not a turtle. It's my falcon. Look at, just look at the danger in its eyes. <laughs> on your command, yeah. it will swoop Attack. in and, and scratch your eyes out. On my command, he, I will put him on the ground and he'll come wobbling over to you and <laughs> put him on your hand. Tweet, 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 tweet. If you enjoyed this episode, please comment, give us a thumbs up, and best of all, share it. It helps us heaps. Come on.